are chatting with a new friend of mine. She's an incredible woman who literally needs no introduction, uh, especially with our history in the past couple of years in this country. She is the founder of the Me Too movement. This is Tarana Burke. <laughs> has been very busy, of course, all during the election cycle. Mm -hmm. We actually met at the food festival, the New York Wine and Food Festival. Yes. Mm -hmm. We were both at an event celebrating women, of course. Absolutely. Women and food that night. And I just, it was pouring rain, by the way. <laughs> I just, when I saw her, I literally fell to my <laughs> knees <laughs> and praised her. <laughs> I mean, you started a movement for women that I think is the most important in decades. Thank you. My mom is 84 and she is a forerunner in that more than 50 years ago, she went from being a waitress to running a very large company. But oh, wow. she was few and far between. And when she graduated high school, mm -hmm. her guidance counselor told her she could be a wife or a secretary. That was the laundry list of what was possible for her. Yeah. Well, we've expanded that a little bit, haven't we? We certainly <laughs> have. What are your thoughts now that we're post midterm election? What, what, what are your reflections yeah. about that night? Well, the night was just, it was so much anxiety on that night. That's right. But I am so excited about some of the results around the country. What they happened just... around the country was absolutely oh, remarkable. Yeah. Whether yeah. you're red or blue, there was a wave for women. <laughs> Young women. <laughs> New blood. Yeah. 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 I think. There are some top ticket and, and lower ticket uh, wins that we are we should be really excited about. There are 19 black judges, all women in Texas, who all won their races. We have two Muslim women now taking office. The first office. two Muslim That's women right. taking office. The first Native the American first na openly gay. Openly gay. gay. Absolutely. And she was an MMA fighter. Exactly. That makes her like a superhero. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There's some, there's some stuff to be. And we have women as young as 29. From the Bronx. From the Bronx. <laughs> Going to Congress. That's right. It's, I can't it's even amazing. imagine I get chills all over my body. Yeah. You know, I've worked hard all my life, and my mom's proud of me, but I can't imagine being the parent of a kid who goes to Congress at 29. <laughs> who, was a, who was a bartender a year ago. That's right. I think it's a really important thing to, to note that what we're seeing is a reaction to what, what we've seen over the last couple of years in this country. People have seen it and realized, wait a minute, I have a voice in this. I have, I'm a part of this democracy. And I think what the Me Too movement did was give people a lot of space to find that voice. And where do you think, what's next for women? Like, wh now what's our next step? Well, here's the thing. Let me just say this about the what's next for women, right? I think that what has happened is that people keep saying, well, women are finding their voice and women are finally speaking up. But that's actually not true. We have consistently had voices. We have consistently spoken up. Everybody has not been listening. Yes. So I think we found a moment where people can hear us now. And so our voices are elevated and amplified. <laughs> so I'm... And I'm I'm saying that to say that I think women will keep doing what we've always been doing. We always show up and we always show out. We bring <laughs> the best, we, we bring our best selves and we bring the best out of other people. So I think it'll be women largely who will drive a progressive agenda in this country and make sure that the least of these have what they need. Like we're in such a divisive moment that so many people are, are not getting their needs met. And I think women will largely lead that, that fight. Um, in terms of our work and the Me Too movement, we're really trying to wrestle the narrative back. There's a right. narrative right now that exists that says it's a witch hunt and, you know, we're trying to take down men and that kind of thing. And it's just not true. It's not about that at all. Not at all. It's about keeping an open and civil conversation. Well, we have to have a civil conversation, right? We don't want to exist in a world without men. What we want to do is walk through life with our full dignity intact. But we want to do that and figure out how to do that collectively. It's not women against men. It's not a gender war. No, it no. takes a community. Absolutely. To build where the community is going to go. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I cannot think of a more positive, a more positive way uh, to end this one hour. Thank you so much to Toronto for making time for us, thank and you. to all of our guests today. Thank you for sharing your hour of your very important day with us, and we'll see you when we see you.